Hi and welcome back to another crafting video. I'm Christine with La La Land Crafts and today's card features a brand new fall mini release um, stamp set called Piles of Fun Clear Stamp Set. So it's got this dog and a fox. It also has a kitty raking the leaves. It includes these leaves at the bottom as well as some individual leaves. And then when you pull the tab it says let's jump in the leaves. It's just a lot of fun. Sometimes these cute little critters will twist and turn and end up on their heads as they're going up and down. Um, I've played with this lots and lots. So I'm going to show you um, what I used to create this. So like I said, the dog and the fox are from the new Piles of Fun Clear Stamp Set. And the tree is from the March 2023 Kit of the Month. Uh, the, the leaves up here are from the Autumn Things die set. It also includes an acorn and a candy corn die. But I'm just using the leaves for this card. And then I used, the for the channels, I used this... Um, little wood die and this came from the fairy house elements die so I'm going to put those aside so you can see it a little bit better but this is the fairy house elements and I thought that this piece would be perfect size um, to create the channel so we've got two pieces of wood or you could just use one um, and use it twice there and then for this little cut out piece you can of course just use your trimmer or your scissors or whatever you want um, but I did use this die and it is from the horizontal pocket die and then for the back side for the element um, to make it interactive I did use this same wood piece um, as I did for the channels and then I also used the smallest circle from the double stitched circles die set. However, you wouldn't have to make it a circle if you don't want to, or you can use a punch if you want. Um, but you can just cut a square on your paper trimmer and that would work as well. So I'm going to show you how I created this. So let's get started. Okay, so I'm going to just go through real quickly what um, pieces that you're going to have to cut. So I've used a 110 pound cardstock, um, so it is pretty heavy. Um, you can use whatever you want for your card base and your top panel, but this is five and a half inch square card base, five and a half by 11, and then score the 11 inch side at five and a half. This one is five and a quarters inch square. Now these next two pieces are what you want to make sure and cut out of um, heavy cardstock like this 110 pound cardstock that I got at Hobby Lobby. So this one is four and a half inches by three inches. So this is our slider piece and this is cut at one and one eighth of an inch by five inches. And this is our little holder for our slider. Um, it'll be wrapped around there. That is one quarter inch by three inches. And then I have these three little circles that I cut out uh, using the smallest double stitch circle. Um, they are about three quarters of an inch in diameter. So if you have a circle punch about that size um, or another circle die that's about that size, you can use that. So I've used scattered straw, carved pumpkin, picked raspberry, and seedless preserves. And I did use a green. Got to get the green out. And we have green, the mowed lawn. Okay, I think I'm going to start with the green for our grass. You can do brown, it is fall, um, a fall themed card, but I think I'm just gonna go ahead and use green. It's a little bit brighter and cuter in my opinion.
So I'm going to set my card base off to the side for now. And what we need to do is do some measuring. So I've got my ruler here. And I'm going to come down about one and a half inches. So about there. I'm just going to put my finger there for a minute. Just so I can kind of see about where, where we're looking at here. Um, so I'm going to come in one and a quarter inches from the edge. And, and at four inches. Okay, and then I'm going to turn it from the top. I'm going to measure down one and a half inches. And I'm just going to place a mark going from the top of this other one inwards. And then from this one, I'm going to do the top of this mark going toward the center at one and a half inches. Okay, so this is what we have. Hopefully that's in focus for you. So this is where we're going to put this little die, this little wooden piece from our fairy house elements. So I'm going to put this right up into this corner, line up the top left corner, and I'm just going to go over it just a tiny bit so it cuts that out. That way you won't have to worry about erasing um, and possibly removing some of that my ink blending. We don't want to remove that. So I'm just going to tape that with a low tack tape. And I know this does not like to stick when it's on um, Distress Oxide ink, but I'm going to do the best I can. Okay. So there's that one. And then I'm just going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to line up the top right corner now with this um, with this mark and go over it just a little bit so it'll cut that one out. Make sure it's straight. So if you are not using this particular die and want to just measure um, on your on your paper trimmer, you'll want to measure down. It is about one and seven eighths long. And this is about one quarter inch wide. It was not straight. Now it wants to stick. Now when you don't want it to, it does. And when you do, it doesn't want to. Okay, I'll be right back. You don't have to use this. You can use um, your trimmer to do this. But what I'm going to do is um, just cut a little bit out here of the side for our tab, for our pull tab. So you can get your fingers in there and be able to see uh, where to pull it as well. So it's this little section here. And so we can see um, our pull tab here and be able to get in there and, and grab it. So you'll want to cut out a little section. You can do a um, half circle if you want there. But I'm using this um, die from the horizontal pocket set. And what you want to do is come up about at least a quarter of an inch, I would say, about like that, so that you um, have some room to put our foam tape. We're going to need that foam tape all across that bottom edge. So I'm just going to go about, about that far in. Whoops. Okay. This is hard. I am not left-handed, so I'm just going to Hold that there, hope it stays. All right. So there's our little outlet piece. I'm 
Okay, and next what we want to do, I'm going to try to get those little tiny pieces off there so it's a nice clean cut for our slider pieces to go. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this on the back and we need to punch a little hole in the middle, but we need to find the middle between these channels. So I'm just going to line up from corner to corner, make a little mark from this corner to this corner, make a little mark, and right where they met in the center is where we want to punch a little hole. Okay, so we're going to be putting a brad there, so you don't want a hole too large, and I think I'm kind of pushing it with this one, um, but this is the only long reach hole punch that I have, um, and I don't know what size this is. Don't know, doesn't say. Um, but it will punch that hole out, and this is what I used on my original card. And it worked just fine with the size brad that I had. So we're going to do that. If you don't have a small um, hole punch for a brad, you can use your picker tool and um, just kind of wiggle it and make make your make your hole. However, if you do it that way, then I would turn it onto the back and use a sander, a, a paper sander, um, to get rid of it because it will kind of tend to push the the cardstock up and make it bulkier on the back, and you don't want that. So we are done with this piece for now. So this is our four and a half by three inch piece, and I'm going to turn it onto the back here. And what we want to do is come down. We're going, to, we're going to punch another hole um, in the middle of this. So I want to come down, what is it, about half an inch, about a half an inch. So I'm just going to place a little mark there. And then measuring across, we want it at two and one quarters is half of four and a half. So two and one quarters right there. And that is where those intersect is where we want to punch our hole. So I'm going to go ahead and use the same little puncher. Okay, so now we want to bring back in our channel die, this piece of wood here. Okay, and we're going to line this up so that it's the hole is right in the middle of this die, and the die is centered, has equal amount of space between the right edge and that hole there. I'm going to just grab a new piece of low tech tape. You don't want your die to shift in the machine, so I'm going to use a new piece. I'm going to go ahead and cut that out. Okay, and then we're going to do the same thing on this other side, making sure that it's centered. and you want to die cut that piece. Okay, we're going to do it one more time. Making sure that it's uh, the middle of your die is even with the hole and we have equal amount of space between the, the hole and the bottom edge. And now we just want to take a pair of scissors 
Okay, and I'm going to cut just a little bit off here. Cut the corner off a little bit. Okay, and then we're going to cut from here down to there. I didn't measure. I just just eyed it. You just want it to go from kind of this corner down to about where that corner where that edge meets it. And then again from here up to that one. So you end up with a piece like this. And then we're going to bring this piece back in and turn it over. And we want to put a brad in through the front. And now you want to put a little shim. What am I going to use? Um, okay, I'm going to use my little, my little um, tweezer tool. And I'm just going to open it up and bend that prong over that. Because if you don't have a little shim there, then it might be too flattened, too tight for this to really swing very well. So you can see that turns pretty easily here. Okay, so that's what we want. And now what we want to do is bring in our pull tab piece and actually before I do that I want to go ahead and stamp on this so I'm going to figure out about where I want it okay so we're going to leave a little bit of room here um, for the pull sentiment or you can do an arrow so I'm just going to lightly draw a little line that we're going to erase later and that way I know about where I want to stamp my sentiment we don't want to stamp within this area here or even really that close to it but I want to just take one of my stamps that says let's jump in the leaves and I'm going to stamp this in the green Let's see the first one I got a little bit crooked so I think this one if I put this on here so it looks straight that might help I had it crooked on there the first time okay and I'm just using my distressed oxide mode lawn ink so it'll kind of match and I'm just going to go ahead and Stamp it right there. Much better. Okay. Let's jump in the leaves. So this comes in the pile of fun stamp set. It's really fun since the animals are kind of jumping into the leaves there. So now what we want to do, I'm just going to swing that up and to get it out of the way. And I'm going to put this, you know what, I think I, I want to erase this line here. And I want to put the smooth side, see I've got the, oh I didn't show you how to do that, did I? Um, so you just want to wrap your, your band piece, this is the one quarter by three inch piece. And you just want to, I'll show you with another piece, that you can just... Put it like that and just kind of loosely tuck it over you don't want it real tight and then bring the other part over and just add a little bit of glue right there and you won't need to snip this off because it's the right size but anyway so this is going to go upside down and i want to have the flat part against my card so it doesn't show any lumps and bumps through the front of my card so I'm going to go ahead and place this kind of near that 
um, opening but not too close you don't want to be a you don't want to see it from the card front but I'm going to go ahead and put that there and then slide in my piece make sure it's not upside down slide that in like that like that okay And now we need our little slider discs. So these are little white um, slider discs. They're plastic and they help the images to slide really well or to spin, um, which is what they do in this case. They slide in, they spin. Um, if you don't have these, I just wanted to show you real quick. If you have some double-sided double-sided strips like this, you can cut a little piece of that. It won't um, probably that won't allow your animals to spin around, um, but it'll work for what for the slider part. So you can cut a little piece of that if you want. But what we need to do is turn this so that the um the channels are lined up like so like this with this slider tab even with the left hand side of your card you want to kind of hold it there and then you want to move this so that this channel lines up with the top of the right channel and this one lines up with the left hand one okay just like that and this is where we're going to glue our little, one of those little discs. So we just want to make a pencil mark there. Okay, and then we can move that out of the way. Make sure again that your pull tab is lined up with the edge of the card. And I'm just going to add a little bit of glue to that and add my little disc. Now, if you're using the foam strips, let me just cut a little, cut a little piece here. If you're using the foam strips, then you're going to want to put your foam strip, and this will fit in there because this is one eighth of an inch wide, and this is one quarter. So you would just put it right on your pull tab, right in there so that the end of it is even with the end of this okay did that make sense i hope that made sense anyway so we're going to just glue this and we don't want glue around the edge so i'm just going to take this piece of cardstock here and go around so it picks up any stray glue i don't think it did Okay, and then just pop that on there like that. Okay, and then remember we had the three circles cut out. Now if you don't have a circle die, you can just cut a square. That is about three quarters inch square. But I'm using these little circles. Again, we're just going to add a little bit of glue on there and pop that right on top and this is going to keep the um, keep this piece from popping off of those little discs or your foam tape you want to keep that down in place so now what I'm going to do is take these little guys we're going to Put this on the front here what I'm going to do is figure out my placement you can glue this pretty much anywhere on the back of your your guys um, I think I'm just going to glue them right in the middle pretty much right in the middle 
So add a little bit of glue, pop that on there. If you get any stray glue, you want to make sure and clean that up. So I'm just taking a little piece of cardstock and going around there. Okay, we're going to need this to, to dry really well um, before we try our mechanism out. So, but I'm going to go ahead and pop them in there and then we'll set it aside. So we want the dog on the left. And you just want to pop it through like that. We want our fox on the right so that they're kind of facing each other as they're jumping. So I just popped those, pop those through. Might have to bring them up a little bit. There we go. Okay, and then we're going to add glue to each of these and then add our little circles to keep them from popping off. Just like that. Okay, now we're going to work on taping the back. I don't want to move it around too much before that glue has a chance to dry. But I guess if you haven't colored your images yet and cut those out, you can do that while this is drying. That would be a good idea. Um, I already have my my images and my die cuts. So I'm just going to set those aside until we're ready for them. And I'm going to go ahead and um, add my foam tape around here while we let that glue dry. So I've got these uh, 1 8 inch foam strips. I love this, this height. It gives a really good dimension. So this is also going to serve as kind of a um, a stabilizer for this pull tab. So you want to get it really close to the pull tab slider but not having it touch. You know you don't want to go over go over that slider. Okay and then this shorter piece can go here Not, not straight on the edge. I came in probably like a sixteenth of an inch. Okay, and then I'm going to grab another strip. I'm going to go across the top. I'm going to use that one for some smaller pieces, smaller areas, I mean. So I'm going to do this one. Now for this one, okay, making sure that that's straight with the edge. I'm going to put this really close to this pull tab slider so that it um, acts as a stopper. So this can't go in any further than that. So I'm going to just go ahead and put that really close to that edge so now when it goes in it'll hit that tape and it can't go in any further than that which is good I don't think I want any more foam tape around there. I think that is good. 
you don't want to hinder that. So I'm going to go ahead and put this on the front of my card and all that is left is the decorating. Oh, I like it. I'm glad I went with the white card base and um, ink blended because I really like seeing that color through um, the slider channels. So when we go to pull this go up and down and they kind of spin around because they're on those little circle spinner discs. So if you have the um, foam strips, they won't be able to spin around. Um, because the foam will keep them um, going straight up and down, but that's okay too. But I just, I like the, I like that they spin around like this, so I'm glad I did it this way. Um, so what we want to do is probably, um, you can either draw an arrow here or stamp the word pull. I don't have a word like that from La La Land stamp, so I will just hand write it with um, a microfine pen. Let's see. I'll just write pull here. And that will get a lot of um a lot of use. So that's why you want to have to create this out of the 110 pound cardstock. So now what we want to do is add our tree first, our tree trunk, right to the middle. Let's see what color I like better. I did them slightly different. I think this one matches the fox just a little bit better. So what I'm going to do is, let's see, we're going to have that bump there because of the, um, because of our brad and we want to give that brad a little bit of leeway so it can spin um so we don't want to glue this whole thing on on there so what i'm going to do is take some other strips that i have that are not as thick as those other ones so i've got this i don't even know what what the height or thickness of this is but can you see that that is about um a sixteenth of an inch maybe i think it's half as thick as the other one so i'm going to use this and i'm just going to put it along the sides of my tree about there And that will help protect that brad. And then I think what I want to do is glue the top of the glue the top limbs of the tree, so when the the animals come up, it won't interfere with it. It'll go right over it. So I maybe even want to bring the tape down just a hair, just to allow the the top part to be able to be glued flat. Okay. Oh, I think I just cut part of my limb, my tree. I sure did. You know what? That is okay because we can always stick a leaf there, right? <laughs> I got lots of leaves. In fact, I think I did, I did color an extra one. So I think I'll just put that right on there. I was not very careful. So I've got my leaves that I colored and those are going to go at the bottom. So I'm just going to tuck this and have it just like that. So the foam tape is on either side of our brad. Yep, I can feel it. The brad's right there. Okay. 
So now I'm just going to pull this out a little bit to get that doggy to come down. And I'm going to go ahead and glue my, my tree limbs. And you know what? I'm going to stick a piece. That's not what I wanted. I'll stick one of these little wax sheets under here just to dab that glue a little bit so it doesn't spread out on my, my inky background and cause any issues. Okay, and then you can just slide that out and it won't have won't have that extra glue on there. Yep, I knew I was gonna do something there. <laughs> there we go. Then I have this little leaf that I think I'm going to go ahead and add to cover that up. And hopefully our dog doesn't run into that leaf. Okay. Nope. I think it needs glued down a little bit better than that. Hold that there for a second. Okay, and as weird as this might be, so this is one of the things that um, we run into when we have interactive cards. So we don't want this popped up like the tree is because those animals are come, gonna come down and it's going to cause an issue. So unless it's gonna be up high, way high enough where, where these guys can uh, land underneath it. But I don't think, I don't think I'm gonna do that. I think I want, to put this over the tree, but I think I want to um, glue the glue the leaves down. As weird as that might look, I'm going to do that so that animals can go over can go over the leaves. steer clear of our little pull tab but we've got those on there nice and flat ish so that's how they work they kind of fall and turn twist and turn and fall into the leaves. This little doggy is completely upside down now, which is kind of fun. So there we've got that. And then we have our little um, die cut leaves from the Autumn Things set. So we've got lots of colors. And what I did was I just kind of laid them up on the top part and then I went ahead and cut um, turned it over and cut off the very tops.
that is my card for today. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and will give it a try yourself. Be sure to check out our new fall mini release at lalalandcrafts.com and you'll find lots of design team samples using this release on our blog and in our Facebook group. So I hope you'll um, go check those out. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.